loving heavenly father let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight in jesus name we pray amen dear sisters and brothers in christ i greet you all in the matchless name of our loving lord jesus christ i praise god for this wonderful opportunity to worship with you pray with you praise with you and share the word of god with you in this holy week especially in this holy wednesday i thank the almighty for this wonderful opportunity and i also want to thank the presbyter of the church reverend manava sandosham and all the office bearers and the committee members and all the people of this church as we are nearing to the good friday that is jesus is going to the cross and he is going to be crucified soon jesus had mental agony and sorrow and many more things going in his mind struggling but in spite of that there are lovely things happen even though the troubles are around him people are most of the people especially especially the leaders of the religious leaders and also the political leaders are against them and they are looking for the opportunity to crucify him but there is a group there there were a group those who are loving him. dear friends this shows that even though we are going through the death valley god is with us that is what the psalm 23 always reminds us jesus never assured us you have no troubles in the world you have the trouble and the sufferings and also many challenges in this world but don't forget i will be with you always that that's what happened in jesus life also many times we accept jesus as the god but we forget he is 100% human we never we thought that jesus is only the god whatever he did when we compare with jesus there's no he is god he can do that i am not of all a human being i can't know Jesus is 100% human as a human being he died on the cross not as a god as a human being he shows us the way how to live in this world so in this situation he is going to be crucified within two days and how much agony he loves this world so that he came into the world God sent his only begotten son to save us because he loved us so this world so much that is what John 3:16 is tells us so in this situation uh, just uh, i want you all to turn mark 13 verses 3 to 9 we will go word by word in the whole uh, <coughs> this passage tells about the mary mary's act of worship and it brought joy to the heart of jesus his heart was full of sorrows and uh, confusions but the joy came into jesus heart because of the act of mary and at the same time the heart of judas worried in uh, john 12:6 uh, this passage is uh, parallel passage is come in matthew 26 6 to 13 and also john 12:1 to 8 in john's uh, tell judas was the person who was very angry uh, because he is having the treasure jesus loves him and so he keep all the accounts of jesus 
Judas. And he, he always thought about the money. So it brings joy to the heart of Jesus, but people like Judas are very much worried and angry with that woman who had spent a lot of money for that. Yeah, I will read the uh, first word. And while he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. Just uh, we uh, bring uh, the scene. In the Jewish tradition, they are not sitting at the table like that we are even. They always uh, sit in the floor with a cushion like that. Uh, they have uh, kneeled with their uh, left hand on the hand. And some people may stand on them also. So in the back. So in that position, these women anointed Jesus. Jesus, the meaning of Jesus is the Redeemer. The meaning of Christ is the anointed one. Here, we have to note one important thing. Jesus was anointed in this world. Where? In the house of a leper. And who anointed Jesus? Yeah, women. Both are untouchable to the Jews. For example, I am ordained as a presbyter in a church. Bishop ordained me as a presbyter. That is what the traditions. Even a king came, some uh, priest, high priest will make him the king, anointed him, appointed him, and pray for him. But in the whole of Jesus' life history, the anointing of Jesus come in here only. That too, in the place, in the house of a leper, Simon. Of course, he was ill, but with thankful and grateful heartness, heart, he invited Jesus and his friends and relatives to come and join the dinner. There a woman came, anointed. This shows her love and uh, affection and gratefulness to Jesus. In what situation, everybody knows Jesus is facing a challenge. He is going to die soon. We may, uh, we may connect with the people when they are in the power or when they are uh, in all their glory. But if the, all the people hated one person, we want to make a distance with them. But here, the Simon and also Mary shows that we are with you. The solidarity with Jesus. Solidarity with the people who are suffering. Dear friends, here is a challenge for us. To whom we are identified? With the powerful people, those who are in power, those who are rich, are we are ready to identify ourselves with the people, those who are oppressed, those who are poor, those who are facing trials. Jesus is the representative of them. Jesus was and is the representative. He always identifies himself with the poor and the needy and the oppressed. He speaks for the people, those who are not able to speak for themselves. So Jesus also wants us to be with him in this struggle. Here, Mary and Simon took a strong stand to, stay, to stand with Jesus. And then, 
next verse said, fourth verse, there were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, and they scolded her. One denarii means one day wage for a laborer. On those days, the one day wage, what is the wage for today? For uh, any mason or something. Thousand rupees? Seven. Like that. So what is, just we think, what is the one, way, one day wage for me? And 300 days wages, almost a one year salary. Just imagine, in any occasion, we are able to give one year's wages as an offering. Sometimes the chair pastor may ask, you give one day income, or tithe, like that. But here, the sister, Mary, with all his savings, he brought the assignment for 300 denarii, that is equal to one year's salary. And that too, in Jewish tradition, they have kept these costly ointments with them. When the dignitaries came, they poured only one drop of that. And the, that one drop will uh, um, enough to smell the, smell the whole of the house. But she doesn't want to use this ointment to another person. She wants to use it fully for Jesus. I surrender all and I surrender all. Her submission as, as a love for him shows this. And uh, Jesus took it in another other way. He said, in, in our tra Indian tradition also, when we, uh, we see if somebody died, we can bring some uh, ointment or some sins. We can pour it and we can pour fully. And we throw that uh, uh, bottle or something which is a container in the box or in the outside. Because we don't want to use it again. So Jesus said, she did it to show the, my death. And the women in, in the Mark chapter itself, in Mark 16, 1, uh, after the crucifixion of Jesus, that is on Friday, the Sabbath was fastly approached, Saturday. So, in Mark 16, 1, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. The both the places, women are the first. Women are the first. Always, the love comes from the women, even in our families. We tasted the love through our mother. Our sisters, our life partners, they are the one to bridge. So here are in Jesus' life also. And they want to give fully to Jesus. But like Judas, the people, they calculated it is 300 denarius. Love never counts, counts. I never, uh, uh, how much you have to spend, how much you have. That love never calculates. It wants always to give the full. Dear friends, here is a question for us. Whether we love Jesus fully, wholeheartedly. That is the commandment, no? Love your Lord with your all your heart, your all your might, and all your strength. All your strength, that is my first priority and priority 
I must give is love to God and then love to the neighbors. And Jesus here said, he praised the women. People scolded her, but Jesus appreciate her doings. I will see. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. She has done a beautiful thing. Uh, in Greek, there are two words for love, lovely things. Uh, two words for good. One is agathas. Agathas means morally good. We are doing morally good things. In another word is kalas. Not only good, but it is lovely. We can do good things, but lovely things. I hope you can understand the difference between both of these. Just for doing good, that, that is different. When we love a person, we want to make, for example, if you want to give a present to a person whom you love on, uh, on his or her birthday or their wedding days, we go and select the in the gift article, which is the best, which is lovely. We never think about the cost, how much it is, how, how best I can do, how best I can exhibit my love. So that kind of affection we must have with Jesus, with God. Not just doing, uh, Jesus asked us to love the poor, just for good, doing good things we are doing. No, we must love that people. Love the people, those who are suffering. How much I can do? When we are in the sick, we must love them and go visit them. It's not just like a visit, just like a visit. Not just to give some alms. Not doing some good things. It must be a lovely one. Love must be with the, our doings. Our love must be ex exhibited. That's what Jesus said. She is doing a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. So we can do good things at any time to the poor. That is not he wants the poor to be always. It is in the Deuteronomy subject. That, that, that's why Jesus uh, quoted here that. But in our life also, the opportunity comes only one time. If we have missed the good opportunity, we cannot do it again. Just you think about your life, how much you, we miss the chances for many things. In Tamil, it is always told, the opportunity never came again and again. Opportunity knocks our doors only once. If we miss that opportunity, we never get it. Never get it. If this sister Mary missed this opportunity to anoint Jesus, she never get it again. In few days, he's going to be crucified. So we must always looking for the opportunity, how, can, how best I can use for other people, how best I can use to be a useful person in this world. Love always looks for the opportunities. But the head, uh, but uh, we don't love the world. We look for the excuses. Why? I, I want to do good things, but because he, she is not worth it, she is not worth for that. I'm not doing that. Some, some kind of uh, excuses to escape from that. Even our families, in our church, in our personal life. Dear friends, be careful that you look for the opportunities. If you miss the opportunity, you cannot get again. We don't know how long we are going to live. 
how, how long we have able to help others both in our physical help or our, our money or our property or in whatever level for example if i am a pastor in some church i have an opportunity to introduce the people to the those who are able to help them and if you are, i am in the office i have an opportunity to help the people those are coming uh, with their files their requests and all that once i retired i missed that opportunity so many times i thank god whenever i peer the people in yes in anyway they uh, suddenly came and said thank you pastor because of you i got this job last sunday also one sister came and said because of you i got admission in wcc because i was god was given some opportunity in me i want to see how much i can helpful to others salary and everything is secondary god give us the opportunities to help others to be blessed to others in genesis 12:2 when god called abraham